They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Hey, who? They're entertaining everyone. So who's gonna grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Star. Hi, welcome to Music Theater Wichita Day at Stars in the House. Thanks so much to Seth and James for creating this show and for opening it up to regional theaters like ours. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Wayne Bryan, the producing artistic director for Music Theater Wichita. I grew up in Southern California dreaming about Broadway. I went to UC Santa Barbara and after that it was the Vietnam War. So I became a Naval officer for three years. Half the time I was stationed in San Diego where I fortunately got my equity card with the Old Globe Theater and started my directing career there. After the Navy, I did get to go to Broadway with three shows, Good News, Rogers and Hart and Tin Types. But like most actors and directors, I ended up traveling the country doing other jobs as well. And in 1986, I was invited to come to Wichita, Kansas. Kansas, really? To direct Oklahoma, starring Rebecca Luker, Richard White, Alex Corey, and Lara Teeter, and to play Charlie and Where's Charlie? Two years later, the theater called and they needed a producer. Had I ever thought about doing something like that? And could I help them out for one summer? Well, it's been 32 years now, and I am still learning on the job. Graciously, uh, the community has supported what we do, and we get to attract wonderful, wonderful people to put on shows every summer. Five big Broadway scale musicals in our 2100 seat theater. They always say in theater that it is better to show the audience what's going on than to tell them about it. So we're gonna use some video today to show you as much as we can. So here's a little bit about our theater and you can see what we do here in Kansas. This is the best of the best of the best, right here. There's no other place I've worked at that has this sense of community. We move mountains in a week. More and more now, if you live in a city and you see a musical show, chances are it came in off a truck, unloaded, entertained you, and then packed up and went on to the next city. So the various cities are all seeing the same kind of entertainment. Here in Wichita, these shows are made fresh in this building. And what our audience sees in Wichita, Kansas, is uniquely put together just for them and to create jobs for the young people who are working in them. Music Theater Wichita works on about a $4.1 million budget. We make sure that we spend at least 70% of that back into the Wichita economy. We buy our steel, we buy our fabric, we hire as many local people as we can. We buy about a thousand hotel room nights a year and 76,000 people came downtown last year to see a music theater Wichita show. Many of them stayed to have dinner, to shop downtown. It's a, quite an economic boon to the community. Every year, Nancy Reeves and Joshua Larson and I go around the country and we look for talent. This year we saw over 1,200 people to come up with the 30 or so that'll be here for the whole summer as performers, plus the Broadway guest stars who join them in each show. I'm Jeremy Stoll. I play the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. I've been there for 10 years and I've taken a two week leave to be in Seven Brides with Seven Brothers. The schedule at Music Theater Wichita is challenging. <laughs> In the best way. It challenges every skill I have. <laughs> What's your subtext for that? I miss Gideon. Two, three. When we are auditioning people around the country to come here for the summer, one of the things we have to look for is quickness. They can be wonderful singers and dancers, but if they don't pick up information swiftly, this is not the right theater for them. We only have 10 days of actual rehearsal to put on each show. <laughs> 
Once we've assembled all those people and we gather them into the mothership here at Century Two, everything happens in this building. It's all under one roof, and that's pretty phenomenal. We've got a costume shop that's fabricating costumes, fitting things from patterns, getting them on actors, making sure they're sized right. There's probably, I would say, 400 pieces of costuming that we are actually building here that will go into the Hunchback show. Choir robes, priest robes, pants, blouses, vests. So we've got a carpentry shop that's building the scenery. Is there anything at all that we're gonna have to like rebuild totally from before? Rebuild. We have about 65, 70 shows, sets, props, and or costumes that can be rented out to other theaters. We get about 10% of our annual budget from the rental of sets and costumes. And that has meant that the licensing houses like to give us the new shows right away so that we can build the sets and costumes that can then enable other theaters to do shows that they couldn't do otherwise. That's how we began with the Disney company. We created sets and costumes for Beauty and the Beast. Then the Disney people spoke to the Mamma Mia producers, so we got to be among the first in the U.S. to do Mamma Mia. We're in this massive auditorium. And then I'm backed up by this massive orchestra. Today in New York, the Broadway pit orchestras are being scaled smaller and smaller for financial reasons. So normally a Broadway orchestra pit now will feature 13 musicians and no more. We continue to use 23, 24, whatever the original orchestration for a show called for. We have a full orchestra for, for each performance. I remember when other shows on Broadway came out that had full orchestras, that people said, oh wow, is this wonderful, a full orchestra, and I thought, no big deal, we do this all the time. Money, 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 must be funny in a rich man's world. Collegiate young people who work here for the summer get to know many Broadway actors who help them find agents. All the actors they bring in from New York and the choreographers and directors, you get to learn from them and learn how different people work. It's a massive stepping stone into doing exactly what we want to be doing with our lives, which is being actors. The talent here is a Broadway pipeline, like nowhere else in the country. I joke with my fellow choreographers everywhere that we come here to go shopping. Right now we have about 40 of our young alumni performing on Broadway in shows. We have alumni like Kristen Chenoweth and Kelly O'Hara who've gone on to very prominent careers on Broadway and in television and films and in recording who have uh, all given great credit to the fact that they spent their formative college summers here at Music Theatre Wichita. We like to say this is where you see the Broadway stars of today and tomorrow. Music Theater Wichita is a real training ground for the professional life. They're about teaching and instructing and letting the students know what the real world is like. I remember so vividly the stage manager when I was an apprentice and getting to be that person for the next generation of young technicians and stage managers has been so rewarding. <laughs> A couple of years ago, we came up with a phrase we think really says who we are and what we do. And it's only four words. Definitely Broadway, uniquely Wichita. So that's what we do. When I first came to Wichita, it felt like I was leaving the Broadway community. But in these years since, it's been wonderful to realize that the Broadway community really extends across the country and we get to be a big part of it. A big part of that is because of the young company we hire every summer. I had been here a few years when I met a teenager named Kim Huber. My partner, Mark Madama, had directed her in Into the Woods in California, along with a very nice young man named Roger Beffler playing the role of Jack. Well, we were going to do Into the Woods, so we invited both of them to come for the whole summer as part of our resident company. She played Cinderella, Roger played Jack, and she also played the leading role in Paint Your Wagon that summer. The next year, we had her create the role of Connie in a revised version of the collegiate show Good News. She also appears on the cast album. You'd love hearing her, so go ahead and look for that. 
And then she headed to Broadway with the original cast of Beauty and the Beast, and then Sunset Boulevard, and then Marie Christine, and uh, we didn't see her back in Wichita for about a decade. But she's with us today, so please say hi to Kim Huber. Hello, I couldn't be happier to be here. Uh, Kim, it's so great to see you. Bring back some memories yet? Oh, too many. I'm a complete mess. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank well, you. We have a few more. Uh, after about a decade, when she and now husband Roger Beffler decided they would raise their family in Southern California, then we got to have Kim back for short visits as our most frequent guest star. A whole lot of other shows followed. See if you can name them. Here's a little montage of just a few of Kim's shows. How can I wait? Can I wait till tomorrow comes? How can I live till tomorrow comes? How can I make every minute fly till that shining moment when I'll be seeing him again? I'm gonna die, gonna die or be old and gray. Why is tomorrow so far away? Now you're on your own, only me beside you, still you're not alone, no one is alone, seems that he's there as the day is closing, on his knees.
<laughs> I'm a complete mess. <laughs> I forgot about the Freaky Friday thing. Oh, dear God. <laughs> that is so fun. You know, uh, viewers, you should know that at the Saturday matinee of Freaky Friday, Kim did exactly what she was supposed to do on stage and did it with much gusto and went off <laughs> the wing after one scene and fell and broke her arm. And I ran backstage, the show was continuing because she wasn't in the next scene. And I went backstage and found her at the stage manager's console. My great team already had her in ice and everything. And I said, Kim, Kim, should I stop things? And she goes, well, it's not my legs and it's not my voice. No, I'm okay. And she continued to do that show and the Saturday night show and the Sunday afternoon show and the Sunday night show wouldn't even take an aspirin lest she get groggy. And instead of letting us fly her home immediately the next morning, she stayed Monday night and did a fundraiser that she had committed to. She is amazing. So so when you think of Wichita, I hope it's not broken arms that you think of. No, I was telling everybody when we had our we had a little talk together before we started today. Uh, it's Brigadoon. It it comes, I feel like it comes out of the, the fog for me every summer and becomes, you know, musical theater heaven of, you know, of, of legends of musical theater, uh, the, the old guard, the, the current guard, and then the new guard of all of all the, the Broadway stars you're going to see soon. But at the same time, it feels timeless. Um, I feel 19 again every time I'm there. And um, <laughs> the creative, the, just the creative safe space that, that you, Wayne, create for all of us. Um, and, and, and not just the actors, but for all the creative stage management and all the apprentices. It's just, it's musical theater heaven. Ah, uh, Kim, uh, thank you. Well, uh, you know, Stars in the House has this tradition of reuniting casts from Broadway shows. And we thought rather than just talking about the theater today, we would follow that pattern. So our our pick today is Mamma Mia, partly because it's such a good, fun show, but also because it allows us to bring together some of our most favored people. And you, Kim, are the linchpin. So as soon as we got the rights to Mamma Mia, we knew you had to be Donna. And then we had to surround you with good people. So first, we're going to talk about the Tanya uh, Tanya is a very fun role, and we have a very fun lady. At that point, she had done three shows for us. Once we discovered her, we kept get, getting her back as soon as possible. A well-known Broadway lady uh, who calls herself, well, you'll see her nickname on when she signs in. May we please welcome Paula Leggett Chase. <laughs> so where are you, Paula? Um, I'm in a little town in Pennsylvania, Kingman's Ferry. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have you here today. We're so glad to have you in this family. You bring such joy and you're always so good to our company and so fun to have on the stage. It's an honor. Well, let's give them just a glimpse of the first three shows you did for us and see if the show buffs out there can identify them. Woo! I once knew a producer whose pretension knew no bounds in the business. My prime, it's a business. It's a business. And the shows I do do business. Cause I know my business. And I've given them the business, honey. All the time. Though I tried, I couldn't hide. When love had blown away. Children close their eyes. best for me. Boys. Yes, he's one of the boys. Yes, he's one of the boys. 
I'll take this job and love it. I'm a woman and proud of it. This old gal is one of the few. <laughs> so paula when you came to wichita the first time did you have any idea what would befall you what our 10-day process was like or what we'd be asking you to do not really i mean i knew that it was fast but i remember i remember getting there and darcy was was doing curtains you know with us of course and i remember her coming to me and going okay so i just want you to know that tomorrow <laughs> you're going to film a commercial. And I, and I had just gotten there that day. <laughs> so that was, and I was like, what, like, what do you mean? And she goes, oh, in full costume, you're going to have a wig and everything and you're going to do a number. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I did, you know, I mean, because we did. So yeah, there were, there were a lot of things that I didn't know, but it was all... I, it was all set up very much like, well, you know, this this is what we do. We're going to do it. And I don't, you know, I don't know, Wayne. I I, I trusted you. I trusted you. <laughs> and, uh, and also I knew Darcy and I, I trusted her. And um, we're talking about the wonderful Darcy Roberts, who's also a yeah. member of our company before she yeah. did her Broadway gig. And Wichita had a great, had a great rep reputation and and i was like okay i'm just i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with this i'm game and uh and i've been very proud of everything that i've done there very proud i mean i watched some of these clips and i can remember that like you know what it was like to change clothes in the middle of an number on stage <laughs> a week and and all of that you know i can look at it and remember the fear but with a little distance and everything looking at it you know i'm very proud of it i'm very proud of it i'm very pleased to have been part of it and the the amazing young people that that i met and worked with and uh, you've helped a lot of them since they've come to new york too oh, I you know. and husband with david them. chase has done master classes with them it's been so helpful for everybody yeah, it's been it's it's been lovely. It's been lovely. Well, we were so glad you were available and interested to play Tanya in Mamma Mia. And even though you had not worked with Kim before that, you had worked in all of your shows with Karen Robb, although you'd never really had much to do together in any of the shows. Right. Uh, yeah. We were in shows together. Um, but it wasn't until we did Mama Mia, and all also remember in Mama Mia. Remember this, Kim? We, you, me, and Karen, we all shared a dressing room. It was the best. It was the best. <laughs> we all have kids the same age, you know. Like we rarely get to be in a room together with with our our real peer peers of age, and and uh, it was we had so much fun. We laughed so hard. We had the best time. We just had, it 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 just made it even better. Well, let's not talk about her anymore. Let's bring her on. Uh, this is Karen Robb. We hope your sound is working. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? It, I can hear you. It's really garbly. I don't know if you can hear me or not. You are fine. That's great. Karen and her husband, Tim Robb, have both done a number of shows with us. We call them sort of the Lunt Fontaine team of Wichita, except they are much happier with each other <laughs> evidently were. And they've been the Tenardiers, they've been the Cowardly Lion and the Wicked Witch, they've been the Fodors in Crazy for You, uh, and they've been Herbie and Rose in Gypsy. And uh, here's a little, a tiny, tiny sampling of what Karen did for us leading up to Mamma Mia. Give me a man who is handsome and strong, someone who's stalwart and steady. Give me a night that's romantic and long, then give me a month to get ready. Oh, I've known the fears of 66 years. I've had troubles and tears by the score. 
But the only thing I trade them for is sixty-seven. Yay! God, I'm such a fan. <laughs> I can't stand it. You you picked all my favorites. <laughs> uh, well, it's hard to pick badly. Anything any of you has done here, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty powerhouse trio of ladies to put in one dressing room, don't you think? <laughs> but it was so much fun. It was really such a good time to work with. Like, I think, Kim, you said something about being in the same dressing room with same age people and talking about kids. And um, it was just a really special time in addition to doing a really, really fun show together. Uh, it was. It was joyful. It was. It definitely that, was. And us, I was thinking the other day, too, about the that, that horrible costume change to go into the finale, though, where we all couldn't get our boots on because they would be our feet would stick so bad and we'd be running on like half dressed to, to try to be cool. At the end. But it was all about those those boots. We couldn't get them on. Just like put it on, just screaming at each other. And I had just started having hot flashes. So being in spandex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that was a hot summer. <laughs> So, 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 Paula, you've done ten Broadway shows. How how is this different? How is this the same? The do, uh, doing Wichita is to doing a, a Broadway show. Yeah. Time. <laughs> the main difference. Time. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like the professionalism and the quality of people. Um, you know, Broadway is time. You, you, there's a lot more time to work on it. Although, you know, you feel like with some things that you don't, that you don't have time, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just what gets put up 
at Wichita, um, but you're still building everything, you know, costumes are built for you and all that. That's the really amazing thing to me because there are a lot of places that put up shows fast, but they, the, everything's shipped in and, you know. Let me bring in our next two creatives on this. Uh, we are not a closed shop. I want people to watch to know every year we bring in new actors. We bring in new artistic people. It's very important to us to always get an infusion of the new talents that are here. But you can see when we have talents like this who are in our family, it would be insane not to bring them back and let them lead the way for the others who are new. I want you to meet two people who are with us for a long time. Brian Markham was in The Young Company in, when he was in college, and now he is a Broadway guy with, I think, seven Broadway shows, and now a very well-established director and choreographer, and now he is our assistant artistic director, learning the ropes with me and ready to lead this organization next. And our musical director, Thomas W. Douglas, who is uh, the leader of the opera department at Carnegie Mellon, but a professional musical director and conductor, and he's been here for 20 years. Could we welcome Brian and Thomas? Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. Oh my God, I'm in the backstage just like, yeah. <laughs> just like this. Oh, I mean, all three of you, unreal. I mean, what a walk down <laughs> memory lane, it's fantastic. <laughs> So Thomas, what are, what are your recollections of this? It's been 20 years now. From uh, uh, one of your students recommended that you might like working here and you just came for one show. Right, exactly. And Ex doing a show without you. you were, exactly, when my student told me about it, I called you because I saw that on your roster was Ain't Misbehaving for that next season. And I said, Wayne, I think this is a piece that we should work on together. And you invited me to come and that was the beginning of it all. It's interesting how that was, you know, specifically a black show, and that specifically opened the door. But once once you got here, and everybody loved you, and our and our musicians loved you, and our students love you, and you're such a good educator that it's important for you to teach the students while you're teaching in the music and while you're getting ready to conduct the show. It's important to you to make sure they're getting out of it everything they can. And Brian's the same way in his capacity. Right. Exactly. But yeah. I mean, the students and the performers to know that when they leave there, that they've acquired some skills that they can carry through the rest of their career. So um, I'm really big on discipline. And, and Wayne, you, you, you and Nancy and Josh bring in the top people to be the resident company. And they're so eager to learn. And I'm so willing to teach them all that I know so they can move on and, and, and continue in their careers. Brian, you were on the other side of the table, and now now you're part of the big team. What is that like? Oh, it's a, it's it's great. I mean, I we were you know just thinking back. You know, the last time I was here as a performer, uh, I I was in the um, ensemble, and we did uh, Hello Dolly, and I came back the next time you did Hello Dolly, which was twenty years later, I think, and I uh, <laughs> beep ball. I uh, uh, was the choreographer, and so you know it's it is a, it's been a whirlwind, and and it's but it's so nice to be able to be in, and like you say, like out of New York City, you kind of think once you leave that world that you're gonna, that that you're gonna just leave a world, but it's not. It's like they it's bringing all that to Wichita, and yeah, you know I get to work with these great, amazing, well, three women and Thomas and you, and then the three gentlemen that are coming forward later. I mean, it is it is spectacular and i don't know that it it, 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 it exists anywhere else like this like so tell me about choreographing for paula legged chase okay, so this is what i i you know i it was the first time uh, i had heard so many things about her from people at which time and then also like some of my students when i was teaching at ocu oklahoma city university my students would come back and say you know the summer being here going we worked with this amazing woman, but you know she is the definition of full out like and uh, and so I was like, okay, great. And so then I met her, and we got in to do I think the first day of Does Your Mama Know, uh, <laughs> and we were doing. It and she came in with these great ideas, and you know the kid, the boys are all there ready to dance, and she's like, well, let's try this and let's try this, and she's just got those gorgeous legs, and she's throwing the bump around the boys' necks, and like, and she was just ready to go from the get go, and. If you, I'm not sure, I think we might see some little clips later, but there's a move that she does that I was like, you know what, I couldn't choreograph that if I tried. And it was just so perfect. And it's that, you know, you know, antique showgirl, 
It's that little step that you do during the number. Th that bad. <laughs> yes, it's just so good. And it was so, you know, it was, it was just, it was the best uh, introduction. And so we had the best time in the room and with all of you on this show. I mean, it was so much fun doing those great numbers, those super troopers and uh, dancing queen jumping off the furniture. And, and Paula, nice to have a choreographer who's prepared and flexible, right? Ready totally to take. Prepared and flexible. Totally like, I'm like, I'm wondering, I kind of want to. And then he, I, I showed her and I go, what if we? And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to throw my leg up on his shoulder. Then I'm going to lay out. And he's going to pull me across the floor. And I said, yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it was so fun. You're, and all of this. So I remember like trying to learn everything. Super Trooper, all of like that. That show was challenging. I and mean, those words, I, I, I don't, I yeah. always had trouble yeah. with those words. <laughs> Serving everything because I want to have better light, and the sun won't hold still. <laughs> the funny thing about that sun. Well, you know, one of the things, one of the things I love about Mamma Mia is the fact that the men's roles are really nice roles, that they're not like the stupid guys that the women have to get in their place. They all have to find their way in the show. And because Donna in the story has had this long time relationship long ago with these three guys, we thought it was fun since Kim has had so many wonderful leading men in Wichita that we would bring back three of her former leading men. So every time she had a one-on-one -on -one scene with any of them, there really would be some history between the two of them. And we, we could not have done better than the guys we have. Damon Kirsch from Los Angeles did Scarlet Pimpernel and My Fair Lady with her. Vincent Carraza, a Broadway guy, had just joined us the year before for Big Fish, and we just could not get enough of him. And Tom Sesma was Kim's first leading man in Paint Your Wagon, but then they got to do The King and I a few years later, and it was great that they all signed on board. So welcome, guys. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Oh, Good God. to see all your faces. Well, let's let's give the audience a little taste of your former dealings with this wicked woman, Kim Hubert. <laughs> Let me look at you. There's so much to say. Oh, how wonderful. I look and you don't turn away. I can't take my eyes from you. God help me, but I want you even more. I can't take my eyes from Without your pulling it, the tide comes in. Without your twirling it, the earth can spin. Without your pushing them, the clouds roll by. If they can do without you, ducky, so can I. I shall not feel alone without you. I can stand on my own without you. So go back in your shell. I can do Yours, I really did it. I did it. I did it. I said I'd make a woman, and indeed I did. I knew that I could do it. I knew it. I knew it. I said I'd make a woman and succeed. I did. Eliza, you're magnificent. Time stops when dreams come true before you. Time stops when fantasy is real. I knew this moment was expected, but this God, who could? That boy is staring, and I feel a chill. I don't know why that boy is staring, and the world is still not telling why. There's no one talking, but I can hear a thousand voices. What's going on inside me? That boy is staring. Is it me he sees? I can't be sure if he is staring. Should I try to please or be demure? My hand is trembling, but in this moment nothing scares me. What's going on? 
used to see what lies ahead. I thought my life might be a Now I just see this girl instead. Maybe I'm down for something more. Time stops and troubles are abandoned. Time stops the minute you rise. I see the future in this instant. Super Pretty, go on, go on. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I didn't realize a woman would never dance in my country with a man looking on. But she will dance with strange man holding hands, etc., etc. Yes, but not always a strange man. Sometimes a very good friend. Good. Then we dance together. You show me. Teach, teach, teach. It's very simple. The polka. It goes one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and shall we dance? One, two, three, and on a bright cloud of music, shall we fly? One, two, three, and Shall we dance? One, two, three, and Shall we then say goodnight and mean goodbye? One, two, three, and Oh, perchance When the last little stars leave the sky Shall we still be together With our arms around each other And shall you be my new romance? From the clear understanding That this kind of thing can happen Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Wow, what a wow. gift. I mean, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And for, to give me these men in my life, you've meant so much to me. And I love everybody so much. <laughs> it's just the happiest memories, every single one of those things. I mean, who gets to have a, <laughs> this is your life moment <laughs> on, on a virtual theater. So, thank you. Well, gentlemen, I mean, well, gentlemen, I mean you all did such beautiful work in all of those shows. And uh, yeah, it's great to see that. That was a cast of 98 in the King and I, which wasn't as big as the 104 we had the previous King and I, but we were a little bit more uh, ethnically <laughs> sensitive this time and were more correct when we went around it this time. So we're learning like all theaters are learning. And I cannot wait until we can have that many people on stage and 30 people in the orchestra pit again. I cannot wait. Here's to that. So when. When, when we approached Mamma Mia, Vincent, you were the only one, I think, who had done the show before. You and your wife had both toured yeah. with it. I think, I think you'd said that, yeah, from the from well, the was, was it hard when Brian gave you all new movement uh, or we gave you all new things to do? 
Um, all movement is hard for me. <laughs> uh, but thank, thankfully, we had Brian, who makes everything easy and fun and wonderful. So, uh, but at, from the perspective of doing a new show, um, but it's just such a fun show. It is such a celebratory show, and and then to have this group, which staring at all their faces, just makes me want to tear up right now. Um, it was it was magic. It's, I mean, it's always magic in Wichita too. You know, I, I, that's the word I always use to describe Wichita. Is that it's pure magic. <laughs> so to be able to come back to a show that means so much to me throughout the years, to both myself and my wife, and then to be able to do it with you guys in Wichita. There's, there's nothing better, honestly. Nothing you know, better. Poor Vince, the first day we met. I mean, we, we had met before. I worked with his wife in, in Beauty and the Beast, and we were friends before, but we were sitting watching the show before Mama Mia, um, before Big Fish, and I was telling him about Wayne and telling him about the theater, about this magic, and then he was looking at me like I was a crazy person, like, all right, sure, whatever. And then it, it was so fun, and I, I did this also with my daughter um, in Freaky Friday with Chelsea. I was like, you, you have no idea you know, what you have in store, and they're like, sure. But um, it's so fun to watch everybody um, discover music theater Wichita as the days progress and say, no, you're not crazy. This is, this is real magic. This is why we do what we do is to be with these people and to be in this creative space and to do these classic shows and new shows. And, um, uh, and it's fresh. And then what Wayne hasn't talked about really quick is about the audiences. The audiences are in insane. They're so, and it's because he's educated them so well the last 20 years that every audience you get in front of um, it just enjoys every minute, gets every joke, gets everything. And um, it's just the most fun. So anyway, kind of nice sorry for being a crazy here. person, Vince. Ken, Ken just doesn't have the most intellectually stimulating reputation, I'm, I, I'm sorry to say. So it's nice to hear you say that. It's an amazingly Damon. sophisticated uh, musical theater audience. Like I was shocked about I didn't know what I was getting into when I came. And then to see this community that almost, I, I can't say rivals New York in terms of the, the scope of the city, sure. But from a perspective of understanding and appreciating music theater, it, mm -hmm. it was mind blowing. And and it makes you go, you just want to come back. You actually never want to leave. You point out, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like- Damon, Damon, you've been with us many times. Your King Arthur was fabulous in Camelot. And then you were equally good in funny in Spamalot. Uh, you can do it all. You played Julian Marsh for us. And because we like having one live song on this show, and Seth Rudetsky himself has prepared a track, would you would you sing to us in honor of that thing which we are all missing so uh, definitely right now? I would be happy to. This is a little uh, Warren and Dubin from Forty Second Street uh, uh, on the stage version. We'll have it. <laughs> Come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. The hip hooray and ballyhoo, the lullaby of Broadway. The rumble of a subway train, the rattle of the taxis, the daffodils who entertain, and interludes and maxis when the Broadway baby says goodnight. It's early in the morning, Manhattan babies don't sleep tight until the dawn. Good night, baby. Good night, milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, baby. Sleep tight, let's call it a day. Listen to the lullaby of old Broadway. Yes. <laughs> but Paul, explain your explain the nickname. Because what you don't know about Damon Kirsch is he knows all the songs. He knows all the songs and he knows the verses. So I call him Duplex because you can just kind of press the button. I'd like to hear all the things you are with the verse, please. And you can do it. <laughs> Okay, speaking of jukebox, we need to get to the Mamma Mia clips, and then we'll have a couple minutes to chat afterwards. Um, I want to say that in addition to all of you talented people, the work on this was done with Jay Branson's sets, Dickton Reynolds' costumes, hair by uh, uh, Taylor Malott and Danae Jimenez, lighting by David Neville, Lexis Danka plays Sophie, Quinn Herod plays Sky, 
And we have Daisy Wright, Cameron Nika Hill, Matt Davies, and Walker Brown featured. So here are some moments from Mamma Mia, the way we did it. Teaser, you turn them on. Lose them running and then you're gone. Looking out for another, anyone will do. You're in the mood for a dance. And when you get the chance, you are the
sat down in the grass by the Eiffel Tower. I was so happy we had met. It was the age of no regrets. Oh, yes. Those crazy years, that was the time of the flower power. But underneath, we had a fear of flying, of growing old, a fear of slowly dying. We took a chance, like we were dancing our last dance. I can still recall our last summer. I still see it all. Round the Notre Dame Our last summer Walking hand in hand I'm in no hurry I know I'm gonna get ya You don't wanna hurt me Baby, don't worry I ain't gonna let ya Let me tell you now But I can't get you off my mind And I think you know That I want you so You must know I miss you But what can I say Rules must be obeyed The judges will decide The likes of me abide Spectators of the show always lay low. The game is on again. A lover or a friend, a big thing or a small, the winner takes it all. Wow. Hey, thank you all for all of that. Hey, before we run out of time, I want to thank uh, Mitch Sutherland on our music theater staff and Stephen Smith, my brother, for helping with the editing of the clips. And I want to thank uh, want to thank Jonah Burden and Tara Serber for thinking of us and working with us technically, and Seth and James for creating this program, raising money for the Actors Fund. And you'll see our crawl down there too. If anybody feels inspired to donate to Music Theater Wichita, we can certainly use it in this very tricky year. But thank you all. I, I hope that brought back some good memories. I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Thank oh, you. Man. That's <laughs> wonderful. I miss you all. It's funny, Mark, Mark Madama is watching and said, this is the theater that Kim Huber oh. built. Oh. <laughs> Nothing would make me prouder, but that's not true at all, Mr. Wayne Bryan. We are so lucky to have you in our lives as our so friend true. and our mentor. Yep. And our you know, and just, it, yeah, so yeah, many I just, things. I was just thinking of all these names that Wayne just mentioned, you know, uh, before the clip and after the clip, and that's one of the things that makes this theater so special. He makes everybody feel like the core of this fantastic creative machine. It's um, it's really remarkable. I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had a lot of practice. I met him when he was in high school. In high school, when okay, I was, do I have time to tell this story? I think we maybe doing, we do. I don't know until they cut us off. We were if doing I a production of "You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown," and the director could not get his 
find his way into the show. Wayne was uh, a, a cabaret star in, in San Diego. and While in the and, Navy. <laughs> right, while in the Navy. And uh, our director was a big fan of his and just went up to him one night and said, can you help me direct the show? And uh, Wayne came in and... I, you were there for the entire creative process. I was 16, 17 years old. Jump cut to years later. I had just moved to New York. I think it was 10, 12 years later. And I was walking down the street uh, past 888 8th Avenue. And I hear someone screaming out my name. And it's Wayne. <laughs> who remembered me from this little high school production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. He was a very memorable Snoopy. And just a few years later, fabulous. a few years later, he invited me out uh, to Wichita, and I met the amazing Kim Huber, and the rest is history. Yay. That's a good story. Thomas, Please. thoughts looking back Please. on all this? Well, the, my thoughts are that, that um, we just do so much work in such a short amount of time. You know, I, I meet each of these actors on Monday and Tuesday, and then we don't see each other until a run through at the end of the week. And then we have an audience right after that. So it's amazing what happens in a short amount of time. It makes my heart beat just thinking about it. <laughs> time expands. It's that's why I think time stop. You know, the time stops song kind of reminds me of Wichita. Mm -hmm. Time stops. It's like so it, true. time expands when you're there. So true. Yeah, it's special. Thanks, thanks for having us all Thank here you. today, Wayne. I love you all. Love you all. I can't wait to see you all in person and give you big hugs. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Hopefully, twenty twenty one, we can. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Here's the yeah. Can we do this again at some point, Wayne, but actually <laughs> live in person in Wichita? Yes, indeed. Wow. Okay, I've got you, on, I've got you live. People heard it. <laughs> <laughs> we own the custom costume, so uh, <laughs> sure. And it's fun if you go to the Music Theater International site and you look up Mamma Mia as a show that you might license. All the pictures are from our production. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you all for saying okay to that. But it's really it's really fun to see there. Oh, that's amazing. That's cool. It's a very special show. And it was a yeah. very special production. Yeah. I remember being backstage with him and the two of us sort of holding onto each other and tearing up and thinking, Really? We've done Showboat, we've done My Fair Lady. <laughs> this is the one that because it's such a passing of the torch from from a, uh, an older group of actors to a just starting group of actors in every one of those scenes. You know, that's that's what I grew to love about Mamma Mia. It's easy for folks to uh, dismiss Mamma Mia as a jukebox musical or less yes. substantial. But having worked on it, there are not many musicals that celebrate multi-generational friendships between women the way this one does. Right. And I said the men's roles are not stupid or uh, un unworthy. The women have the focus, but it's a story about people trying to connect with each other in a really nice way. And I, I grew from working on it. Do you know, I think that's something interesting that happens there at Wichita because of the way we work, that concentrated period of time. Mm -hmm. You come in and, you know, you're prepared, you familiarize yourself with the script, the song, uh, but you're learning so fast that you don't have time to filter out what you don't want to learn. So somehow... <laughs> you find your way deeper into material and you have a higher right. respect for it by the time you open. That's and right. That's you what also, makes every production so incredibly special. Yeah. You also know you only have one weekend to do it. So yeah. every bit of your energy goes into th that production and every performance. You know, nothing's, you don't waste any time. It's, it's all yeah, important because there's only like one week. Right, you're doing it as if your life depended on it. <laughs> also, one of the things that I've found too is that you, li you literally, because it's so short, you lift each other up. There is never judgment. There is never the, the vulnerability and that kind of the guards that we put up that take a while to break down. You break them down so quick. Right. And you, and you just, like everything everybody does, you say yes and yes and yes, rather, than, yes, yes. rather than that fear and that, you know, oh, I don't want to look. You just go. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to go for it. And it's infectious. It's, and it, in the results, I mean, look at it. Look at those clips. The result is just, yeah. it's mad. 
pure magic. You know what else is really cool about it is that I know Wayne, bring, Wayne, you have brought us all out so we can, because we have experience, so we can set an example, so we can sort of pass the torch. But I honestly think that every time I've come out there to Wichita, I have learned as much from mm. that ensemble as much about loving the theater and loving the form and, and, and just being alive and present and available. I've learned as much, if not more, from them as anything I could ever teach them. It's That's one of my favorite things about it too. It's just to be able to be around and work with those young people and I just, I, I look at them and I, I'm astonished by what they are and what they have, what they don't even know that they have, and sometimes they do know, and that astonishes me too. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just the thing. Yeah. You know, you know that come fall, there are going to be maybe four or five of them are going to be banned in a Broadway show, just like that. You know, just like that. It's yeah. Plus, the caliber of the people that like Thomas and Brian and Wayne who bring such incredible, like. I mean, you guys, your mentorship to the to those kids. Yeah, it is it is Broadway level. It is beyond Broadway level. So they know how to work. They they come they come to the city and they know how to work. Yeah, yeah. and you raise yeah. us. They come to work and they know how to be on stage. They know how they know how to uh, well they know how to just be. They know how to be on stage. They know how to work with other people and. Uh, not that a lot of other stuff get in the way. Just like they come in, they're ready to do the work. You know, and, who want that? Who doesn't want that? And Wayne also is amazing at not only in finding these incredibly talented people, but these really special people that know how to work together. And so he would create. It, it's it's not a coincidence. I mean that I think that Roger and I stay together, kind of. No. I mean that I mean that you bring you match make these friends. I, my friends for life are the kids I met doing um, music theater Wichita. Like the, some of them I went to college with, but the ones that I really connected with, the Jessica Bovers, so the Lauren Kennedy, Matt Bogart, like those friends for life. Right. And that's because you, I know I know you walk into those auditions and go, this person's really talented. <laughs> Not right for Wichita. That happens. I know, it gets, right. but some, but no, you match make you know families of friends so that when these kids move into New York, they have people they can depend on. People they've been through a lot of things with, you know, socially, um, you know, they've rom romances and um, all the sorts of ups and downs in these ten weeks that they go out to New York with friends they really trust and because they've been through this sort of fire together. So it, it, that's the other special thing about the ensemble. Yeah. Well, Kelly, Kelly O'Hara has been very gracious about this. And uh, after she had done her first two Broadway shows, which were not smooth sailing, we offered her a chance to come back and play Magnolia in Showboat. And she said, oh my gosh, yes, I got to get back and remember why I'm doing this. Oh, and if, again, being around the young people. And then uh, she's also been very nice to say that the fact that we have to work so quickly means that young performers realize that they are not maybe unlike their college productions, they're not gonna be spoon fed every reaction and they're not gonna have every moment supervised. Mm -hmm. They're gonna to have to take some responsibility for filling in the gaps. Okay, I'm a villager. What kind of villager am I? What is my history? What's my relationship to the guy selling yarn? You know, you, you have to fill in some things. And if you can do that in, a, in the right tasteful way, when you walk into an audition, you bring a whole lot more than just feeling like standing there and singing the right notes is sufficient. And when she did that New York Philharmonic, uh, My Fair Lady, they, they were rehearsing in different rooms and then they came and did it with the orchestra. Kelly said, I never could have done that if I hadn't done Seasons in Wichita, where you just, you work in different rooms, you put it together, you keep the big picture in mind. And uh, so I, I do feel that we create uh, an atmosphere we're a valuable tool for young people. I, I always think that the young people who end up on Broadway would have gotten there, but I think we help smooth the process and maybe keep their spirits up long enough for that to happen. I don't know, but I, I do feel good about what we do for sure. Well, they learn a lot about themselves before they go. They know a lot of what they're about and what they have to offer and, and possibly, um, how they're going to be viewed, how, how they're going to sell themselves to, right. you know, you learn a lot of that. 
um, which is, I mean, I, I think that's one of the hardest things for a young person to learn and figure out is exactly like who you are and what you are at any, you know, at any given time. I think that might be a sign that we're just cuckoo enough that maybe we should allow uh, Jonah to wrap us up. They gave us some extra minutes, and I'm so grateful for these that our audience got to see and hear a little bit more from each of you. Thanks uh, with all my heart for coming to Wichita to begin with and for drinking the Kool-Aid and staying with us. <laughs> Uh, a favorite memory, uh, uh, a, a favorite moment, anything comes to mind that we didn't cover? For me, it was the uh, end of the first run of Big Fish when we did the, uh, the run through. Uh, I mean, I, I'll, I'll never forget, like I could, the, the tears, I just, it, it was so emotional. It, I know just, just to think that we had done that in such a short period of time, the pressure, the, I mean, just to see that massive group of people with all yeah. those, all the behind the scenes people coming together in, in like five days, it's just unbelievable. Uh, and then you just, this rush of emotion, it was, just, uh, it was magic, magic. Um, yeah. I don't think I can pick a favorite moment. Um, 50, over 50 shows since 1995 and Tim's done over a hundred, my husband. Um, and I really credit Music Theater Wichita with us staying in, in Wichita, staying in this area. I think we would have moved somewhere else if it hadn't been here. So, When we, uh, when we did Gypsy, uh, Eric Preminger, Gypsy Rose Lee's son, came. We brought him in to do a show about his mother at the Orpheum Theater in Wichita. Uh, you know, because in the show Gypsy, Wichita is the bottom. It's where she finally got the first Gypsies. <laughs> So Eric came and he heard some of, and I, and I, he said, who's playing Rose? And I said, oh, it's a woman who lives here and she's absolutely wonderful. And I could see his eyes kind of roll up in the back of his head. Oh, a local community theater lady is doing it. Oh, I'm sure she's very sweet, you know. And then he heard a little bit of the rehearsal. He said, oh my God, she's the real thing. And I said, yeah, she is. <laughs> she choose to live here. She and Tim could work anywhere and they make everything look so easy as Tom was saying earlier, but they choose to live here and raise their family in the Midwest. And that's great too. I love that today we have both coasts and Wichita covered because really what we do in the summer brings people from all over the country to this little Mecca of Broadway musicals in the summer. And then we send you all out to be our advocates and friends. So. With an amazing audience. The audiences are fantastic. And I would be remiss to not mention, you know, my favorite, of course, was getting to finally do, you know, I did Beating the Beast on Broadway as Belle and on the National Tour Forever. And my husband, as you know, we talked about Roger, who is a member of the company, was a beast for, year, uh, for years on the tour, but we never did it together officially. So of course, Wayne being the magic maker that he is, when they finally got, when they had the rights, not finally, they were the first people to get the rights to do Being the Beast, um, that we got to finally play Belle and the Beast together with our dearest friend, Ed Stoudemire, who had also played Gaston for years that none of us played together. So we all three were together and my four-year-old daughter was out in the audience watching us. <laughs> and that's when I got to meet Thomas and, uh, that that has to be that that whole process was so special. Um, Wayne putting together that that dress rehearsal where we weren't sure everything was going to come together. We worked that last hour through through dinner and then it came together. It just beautifully. It just I have a, a happy memory. memory to my staff and in that case when we were doing Beauty and the Beast and Karen was the wardrobe and Tim was Maurice. Uh, we we had not seen the sets with the costume, with the hair, with the lights, with the orchestra, until that dress rehearsal on Tuesday night. And on, during the day on Tuesday is when we usually do our tech of act two, but we hadn't gotten through all of act one the night before. So we were starting late and we worked up until the five o'clock break you're supposed to take. And we needed another half hour to at least get through the beast transformation once so that he would not be doing that in front of people for the first time. And God forbid something goes wrong and some child in the audience <laughs> is disappointed. 
So, uh, so we, we were allowed to work another half hour if we could provide dinner. So Nancy Reeves, our company manager, I called her maybe at four and said, Nancy, we need dinner for 300 people. Do you yeah. think this is possible? <laughs> and she called, she said, she hung up the phone. She called every restaurant at the end of their lunch day and said, what have you got left? Send it over. <laughs> and we came, we came off stage at 530 and the whole lobby was arrayed with this amazing <laughs> assortment of food. And then uh, and we did the dress rehearsal that night and everybody was so tired that the actors can only work so many hours, but the crew was working really late to finish all those dancing teacups and everything you have to build in that show. And when we did be our guest and the knives and forks and the and the whip came out dancing, <laughs> and the lights were beautiful. These grizzled old carpenters were hugging each other and crying. <laughs> it was it was a night like no other in our history. And Kim was there, and Roger, and Ed Stoudemire, who had also been in Into the Woods, and mm -hmm. painted the wagon with them too back in that first summer. So yeah, it was great. Well, well you know, wrap up on. Hmm? I just remember that production of, of Beauty and the Beast. We had the orchestra rehearsal. We were playing home. And I've taught that song so many times at the university. But as they were playing, I just started bawling. And they were looking at their music. And then after I cut off, they looked up at me. And I'm like bawling. And I just said, Is, isn't this why we do this? <laughs> you know, it was a, a great memory. Well, this is why we do this. And I'm so grateful for Stars in the House for letting us celebrate it like this. And again, if anybody wants to know more about Music Theater Wichita, mtwichita.org. We have so much digital content that was created this summer in lieu of our live performances. So go to our Facebook page or go to our web page and see what we've done. And uh, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Jonah, take us away or we'll all start crying. <laughs> <laughs>